Hello everyone and welcome to the recap of the 3v3 Renegade tournament that happened a few weeks ago. I'm your host Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, though I think I'm just gonna... I'm gonna stop doing that. Just Dominic. Hi guys, I'm Dominic. And we have the... Like I said, the Renegade 3v3 tournament. That was last Friday, but I was unable to do it because it was a Friday. I work during the week, so I was unavailable. Anyway, as a result, we had the post commentary. So, I'm going to be going through one match of each round of the Swiss part. And then after that, we'll be going through the elimination bracket. I think I can do all the matches there. I don't know for sure. Definitely going to do both semifinals and finals. There was only four teams at the end, so it's... Single elimination, two semifinals and a final, and then a third place match. Should be able to do all of them. But anyway, yeah, like I said, first thing will be one of each Swiss... One Swiss round from every round. One Swiss match from every round. So, first off, we're going to be having Team FFC for Droppy versus Cannibal Wesley and Saniac. There were specific, specific names, but unfortunately were not clanned up, so I... It's going to take me a couple seconds to double check what they are. So the first match is... Team XCOM versus Team Mumble. Oh, I see XCOM is Zen for FSC Droppy. Okay. Yeah, the way this... The way the game works, I'll see in a sec. There's clan symbols. So you can see, you know, XCOM, XCOM, Mumble, Mumble. But then there's GBC here and... Not sure what FFC's clan is. But that's fine. So yeah, Team XCOM in blue. Team Mumble in the red. And let's go. I... Ah. All right, let's go. Let's go. There we go. All right, so you have Zenfer with Shieldbot Factory, Droppy with the t Tank Factory, and FFC also with no, sorry, the Rover Assembly. Okay, that might have been a bad design. Anyway, the Rover Assembly. On the other side, we have Saniac with Cloaky and Saniac, Saniac, Saniac. Oh, I see. Okay, we got Cloaky Gunship, and we have Pacific Rim style. Everyone playing on the same player. I mean, I know that's more like the commander. Someone was pointing that out in one of the YouTube comments recently about how the commander, I think RAR was like, they were commenting how it was like Pacific Rim basically because you have one giant mech running around. But I think, no, this sort of thing is more in the spirit of Pacific Rim where everyone's working together to control one thing. So, Team, Team Mumble is one unified whole. So like I said, going for Tank, tank Cloaky, and Gunship. Which is no surprise, tanks in this build, because this is 1.6, 1.7.3, this is before the nerf to the Cyclops. So with tanks, Cyclops are actually really good, and we're going to probably see a lot of them. In fact, now we're not seeing them yet, the Ogre's coming up first, Cyclopses are fairly expensive, but even then, both teams are running 20 to 30 metal per second. More of the problems for Team XCOM running 22 metal per second. Team, sorry, Team Mumble, Team XCOM's doing fine, Team XCOM's 34 metal per second. They've really got no problems there, but they are going to have to worry a little bit about this potential nav opportunity... Or at the very least, Hercules being used to mess around a bit, get rid of a few metal extractors. And that's fine, though. Team XCOM definitely has that sort of. They know exactly what they want to do here. Same time, though, could actually going forward over to the north side just to make Team Mumble's life a little bit harder. One metal extractor for metal extractor. No real major damage thus far. Just small pokes here and there, just to get an idea of what their opponents have. Because they want to know, what are my opponents building? How are they set up? It's 3v3 on combo catcher, so it's not too unusual, but... Yeah, you, know, you got to scout. However, this... Ooh, double commander drop. Because bear in mind, these commanders are part of one one gestalt hole. So they might as well just drop them in and use them for extra damage. While keeping one commander back for the... Well, I guess they still have storage, but... One commander back to make sure they always have storage. And this might actually work pretty well. So you see next command... Oh, well, not really see next commander. The two Mumble Clan commanders at the bottom. The Brecon and Strikecom surprisingly doing a fair amount of damage with nothing but their base armament. And not much was prepared for this because everything had been built up for anti-air. Really trying to stop the Herculeses, but nothing set up to stop the commanders. There aren't... There's an ogre and a blitz coming around the side, but they're going to take forever. The shieldbot factor should likely go down, especially with the Hercules help. All these tiny pew pew lasers, but they're doing their job. At the same time, both commanders will soon upgrade. And don't forget... There is, of course, the fact that these commanders are still supported by Hercules. They could be just transported out of there any time. But now both both have upgraded. We have Beam Laser and we have the Light Particle Beam. And those should... Ooh. The Shield Factor, seriously. What? It's so close. One more Light Particle Beam hit should do the trick or anything, really. Attack! 
No! Or get the Herculeses in to pick them up. Or, well, remaining Hercules. I see, okay. So, the Strike Commander is... Looks like they're moving back to try to get picked up. The Recon Com forced to run away. Not really able to work out of that. And I think... Is the Hercules going to go down? Oof! 98 health! It's... Got to thread the needle here. One more hit will take it down, but it does manage to escape. If it's being careful, yeah, it does manage to escape. There's nothing in the way. It's out of there. And at the same time, several glaives coming in here to destroy a few frontline workers. There we go. That's the major damage. Sanias Commander also forced to escape. The glaives coming in to provide a little bit of a rescue force. But I think Sanias... Or no, it's not Sanias Commander. I'm so used to that because... No. The Recon Commander is going down. The Strike Commander did manage to escape, but still, it's one commander that went down for free. And at the same time, the Tank Foundry went down from FC. Managing to get a few forces in there, probably some scorches in there. Check the corpses. No, just a few darts. Hmm. At any rate, that is one less factory for Team Mumble. But on the other hand, Team Mumble, actually, I don't know. They didn't really do all that much damage now that I think about it. They damaged the shield bite factory, but never destroyed it. They knocked around a few metal extractors, but to me, the most damaging thing they did was those glaives coming in here and taking out one of the workers. Otherwise... Most of that was primarily a distraction. Probably just set them up to be able to actually build up more in the background. Expand a bit more while attacking. But while there was kind of a neat little approach, it didn't accomplish much, to be quite honest. It just did some damage to things, but didn't really destroy any major infrastructure. While at the same time, one of their factors was destroyed. And honestly, FFC is pushing really hard to just tear apart everything. These fencers will not last too long. Might build rid of a harpy, but no... The Glaives are perfect counters to this. Team Mumble is on this. At the, on the other hand, though, Team XCOM, they do have an economic advantage, and they have had that advantage for the entire game thus far. It's not like they're behind. Like I said, they didn't take much damage from the commander drops. It was a neat little strategy. I'd like to see if it was used a bit more, if it was used to, I mean, destroy this factor for real, maybe get rid of one of the other commanders, or just, you know, double-team one of the commanders. Maybe... Honestly, go around the back of all the factories. But the thing is that ogres were set up to basically deal with that. And there wasn't a whole lot of push to either side. Given that Comic Catcher is as large of a map as it is, I don't see that strategy easily working. Just your opponents are so far away. Commanders move so slowly. And there aren't a lot of really concentrated targets apart from the factories and maybe the opponent commanders. That's about it. So right now, Team Mumble is falling behind. Basically just trying to hold the line here against this entire force. We got ogres, we got rogues, we got fencers, and to fight them off, only a couple ronin and a few harpies. Sorry, a few... Yeah, harpies, that's right. That, that is what they're called now. Ah. Tripping over myself here. But even then, the fencers basically being the front line, making that... Making that entire defense force pay for even trying to stop them. You know, as it is, as long as the fencers are not destroyed completely, the, the reavers can't really do much. The ogres are able to then run roughshod over everything... I think this might be the push. I mean, the Hercules is certainly trying, but it can only last so long. The Ogres are pretty effective anti-air. I mean, that's not really their... That's not their main function, but they fire missiles, and they fire missiles in any direction. So, yeah, they can shoot up. Saying the last commander on... I can't say anything. The strike commander on Team Mumble does not look like they're going to have a fun time here. I thought I could have much longer to live. The Ogres... Actually, No. The beam laser upgrade does manage to save them. Have they upgraded at all since? Yes, they have. Added a bit of HP as well. But yeah, the beam laser... Oh, you know, that was part of the original upgrade. My bad. So the beam laser is good. And now that the tank factory is up for Team Mumble, they should have a bit of an opportunity to push back. But again, they have a massive economic disadvantage. There is another wave coming in from Team XCOM. And not really a whole lot that Team Mumble has to set up to stop this. I mean, most of their forces were destroyed in that initial attack. They don't have a whole lot of other factories coming in, building up stuff. Mostly, they're trying to build up this ogre, maybe build up a few caretakers. Once the caretakers are online, they should be able to work that into a reasonably effective build setup. I mean, start assist building the, the ogre. It could do the trick, actually. But yeah, that was a bit of an issue. So, with this setup, I mean, Team XCOM definitely having to hold back a little bit of a counterattack. But, honestly, 
The issue here is T-Mobile cannot really build up a force to actually effectively counterattack, but they need to build up a force to effectively counterattack. They can't counterattack without having enough of an army because their opponents, I mean, just up in the front lines, there's already 2,500 metal worth of units, and that's just the front lines. They're still streaming in forces all, all through this time. It's not like they're stopping to build. They did add an airplane factory, but still. The point is, no construction has stopped, and Team XCOM has taken over two-thirds of the map, just basically running workers along with the rest of their forces. They might as well. I mean, if they need to repair anything, it's there. And they can just do what they're doing right now, which is expand across the entire map, lane by lane, and end up with a double, a two-fold metal advantage on CCR when their opponents have 60 metal per second. They have 120. And they're just using it to pile on more and more forces. Not even going for striders. Not even going for anything super fancy. Just going for additional units. There's larger and larger armies. And that's fine. I mean, FFC pointing out they don't want the Cyclops to be built. And that is not going to happen. The Cyclops will be able to come up. So that is the one last hope that is there for Team Mumble. Is that the Cyclops might actually get up and might do something before it dies. The Fencer Assault coming in here. It's still so massive, and their Cyclops is not getting repaired quickly enough. This is not going to work too well. Gets rid of a Felon or two. Is that a something? I mean, the Slow Beam gets rid of the Shields, and the Shot gets rid of the Felon. I mean, this is why the, this is why they were nerfed. This is why they dropped the Slow Beam and added the Shot. No, the Cyclops does manage to get away. The Tank Factory could go down, and it will go down, but that Cyclops is going to be repaired. And note, I mean, the Dirtbags certainly aren't going to help much, and the Dirtbags will add a little bit of Assault. Get rid of the Command at the very least. But now the Cyclops is in a reasonably good spot. The last commander coming in here to try to help finish fixed up. The engineer commander, too, so it has the most build power. Currently running 14. Not sure exactly how that relates to repairing, but regardless, a lot of repairing available, or at least was until, Sania, until the last commander for Team Mumble went down. The Team Mumble with no storage, no commanders, and no more willingness to play the game. That is Team XCOM taking the lead. And again, they had a massive economic advantage. So really, it was just a matter of pushing. So yeah, good job, Team XCOM. Team Mumble going down one point. And again, this is... thing here is that we have... That's our round for round one. So yeah, Team Mumble had... Team Mumble, they did have the... Let's see, that was... Here... So they lost to Team XCOM, and they had Top Cat Venom and Vol Molecule as Team Venom advancing, Team GBC advancing. Well, not advancing, but just getting one point. As well as Team Pluck and Team Unlucky. So the next match I had lined up, happened afterwards, is going to be between Team Pluck and Team Unlucky on Ravaged. Yeah, that'll be up in a couple minutes.